I already drank that whole shake. This is lab-created alexandrite. Alexandrite is a color change variety of the mineral chrysoberyl. And because the color changes under different light, alexandrite is often described as emerald by day and ruby by night. And that's because it is green in daylight or under fluorescent light, and it is red in incandescent light or candlelight at night. Natural alexandrite is very rare and very expensive. Cost is based on size and the percent of color changing from green to red and clarity. And alexandrite does remain one of the rarest gemstones there is. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have cut natural alexandrite before and I made a video on cutting and polishing natural alexandrite, right? And here's the link if you want to see that video. Um, I do have several pieces, natural alexandrite rough, which I plan to cut someday. Um, however, the natural alexandrite rough, which I have, are all in the one carat range. Um, this piece of alexandrite is just over 50 carats, and it would be priceless if this had been created by nature rather than in a lab. So if you have a loved one or a friend or a customer who wants a large alexandrite gemstone, unless they have a small or actually a large fortune to spend on natural alexandrite, the alternative is a lab-created alexandrite. Now this piece of lab-created alexandrite was given to me as a gift from a fellow cutter uh, when we were up in the mountains of North Carolina at the United States Fasters Guild Franklin Frolic earlier this year. And my friend had purchased a large piece of, I believe, pulled, the pulled method of lab-created alexandrite, and trimmed uh, some smaller pieces to cut. I'm not sure if he's selling, uh, my friend is selling the alexandrite rough or not, um, or if he's just going to cut it all himself. And I'm not certain it was the pulled method or, or which method uh, he got this from. I'm hoping my friend will Come back online and put a comment into the video and give us all some more information on this rough. So this was uh, from the cutter that bought this rough. Uh, it was a slab from the uh, kind of the third way to grow man-made. There's there's lab created by Bull, which makes kind of a smaller round, kind of like shape of a candle, or hydrothermal, which generally is not this. It could be in some cases. Or the third method is the Kaikowski method, which makes a big slab. And I do have a slab of sapphire that I bought from this method. So this is a sneak preview of a, a project I'm going to work on, 234 grams. About 1,200 carats. And uh, I hope to get a special project off soon, but this would be, would be what was this Alexandrite started out to be. I came across this design, Improved Utopia, in the uh, United States Faceters Guild website. It was selected for their annual gem cutting competition uh, in 2022, and it is not going to be an easy design to cut, which is why it was selected as the design at the master's level of their competition. But this design was originally created by the Lake Jeff Graham, uh, the Utopia design. And it was modified for this competition by none other than Arya Akvon. Wow, you know, two of my favorite designers of gem cutting diagrams. So I knew when I saw the design that I'd just have to give it a try. I have cut a lot of gemstones using designs by both of these individuals, and they are my, among my favorite gem diagram designers. And all I can say is when I saw this design, I just had to say, wow. Again, you can find this design uh, in the 2022 single stone competition on the uh, USFG website. Um, however, if you wait uh, until later, you'll have to search around the USFG site to find this design because they come up with a new with new designs for their annual competitions and the next year design will replace this one. So if you want it, download it now. For our lab created alexandrite, for this design, the 24 tooth 
and the corresponding uh, 72 tooth on the other side. That's going to allow me to set the width of our stone. So we want to orient our stone so that when we're cutting the 24 tooth that it's this way. This little where it kind of slopes off towards what will become the point. We want that on the front and then from there to there will be the 24 and 72. So we set it up so that's horizontal with the 24 and lock our stone in place and we're ready to start cutting our alexandrite. I preformed our alexandrite with 150 grit uh, diamond grit topper because I wanted to move a lot of rough out of the way. So it's not exactly uh, preformed where I need it. I need to bring the pavilion down a little bit to make a culet or a center point right there. And I need to bring the stone in a little bit on the girdles, but uh, at this level of a grit, this is, this is uh, all I need to do is get this close for a preform. So now I'll move to a finer grit and continue to work on the Alexandrite. Okay, so I'm working with the 600 grit uh, diamond topper and I'm gonna work on getting the girdle just about right. So the facets that set the width of the stone is your 24 and 72 index teeth. When you cut there, and of course on the other side, 72. That is gonna give you the width of your, of your stone and those facets are, for me, will guide me on the rest of the facets all the way around the stone. So although the first girdle line of instruction says to cut the 0, 4, and 92 teeth, which would be these teeth down here in the bottom of the girdle. Instead, I'm gonna cut the 24 and 72 and set the width of the stone, and then, then I'll work with all the other uh, girdle facets. So I pretty well preformed our stone. Now, one thing to, about this design that uh, you've gotta watch out for is that it's got a rather high crown. So you have to make sure you have enough rough available for the crown. So. Right now, this stone's uh, 13 and a half millimeters in width. So what you do to determine how much you need for, how much material you need for the crown is you go to the instructions, the data, and uh, it gives you the C to W ratio, which is the crown or the top half of the stone. This is the bottom half of the pavilion. Um, gives you the crown based on the width. So we know our width right now is 13.5 because we know the, uh, the 24 and 72 teeth give us the width for the girdle. So 13.5 and you just multiply it by the crown to width figure of 0.229 which is given to you in the data. So we need about three millimeters plus we need a little bit for the girdle. So you just, uh, on your kelpers, you get it to about about three millimeters, and you see if you have enough space, which I don't, right? I don't have enough right there. So this will not uh, cut, I don't have quite enough to cut the upper half of the stone for a 13.5 millimeter wide stone, which I was, you know, going to cut it a little smaller anyway. So now I've got to bring the sides in a little bit so that I can make sure I have enough rough for the upper half of the stone. So I just will go over the girdles again. And again, the way you set the width for this design is the two key facets on the 24 and the, and the 72 side are going to give you the width of the stone. Okay, I'm ready to start uh, pre-polishing the pavilion of our gemstone um, with uh, 8,000 grit diamond on a zinc lap. So this is one design where I would, uh, and I do, use my Sharpie quite a bit to mark facets because it's easy to get 
think you're working on one facet when you're actually cutting a different facet. So if you're looking at one facet to move and you're cutting another, it's easy to overcut. So to avoid that, you know, I use a Sharpie. In these cutting instructions, I would switch the order of the P4 line of instructions and I would cut the 32 index tooth facet before the 28 index tooth because I want to match the girdle lines up evenly with the previous girdle line from the previous uh, facet. So you can see this by using the cutting assistant feature of the GemCut Studio or GCS software. You can see that if you cut the 28 tooth before the 32 tooth, uh, that you don't have anything to line up your 28 tooth with. You may undercut or overcut and not really know it until later. So to me, uh, this is not a, uh, this is more of a glitch in the software. I suspect it puts index teeth in a row um, using a numerical order from lowest to highest. I don't think it's a design flaw. You just need to note that it may be better to switch out the cutting order. Now I have prepared a whole series of videos on learning GemCut Studio, so I won't cover how to use PCS here. You can view those videos if you want to learn all about GemCut Studio. Okay, I polished the bottom half of our lab created alexandrite with uh, 60,000 grit diamond on a zinc lap and it polished up no problem uh, you can see now in, inside the uh, this rough there's there's a lot of bubbles but it's still a beautiful piece of rough so I'll now transfer the stone and start uh, to cut the upper half so I'm ready to cut the upper half of the uh, lab created Alexandrite and so I'm going to start off with a, uh, a 150 150 grit topper and I will cut the uh, stone down until I get a girdle of about you know it doesn't really matter 0.6 millimeters 0.7 something like that I'll just cut it way down and then I'll fine-tune it with the uh, uh, the finer lap. So 150 grit topper lap is, I have this one, a topper lap is very thin, so it's designed to fit on top of a master lap. These are not very expensive laps. I would say, you know, just buy them anywhere and you'll be fine, but I did buy some ultra, ultra cheap ones. And if they go too cheap, then they kind of aren't flat at all and they wobble and uh, if it wobbles too much then it's it's cutting poorly but at the rougher grits it's not a real big deal but I will say I mean I used to say there's no difference between these inexpensive topper laps buy them from anywhere eBay Amazon wherever they're all about the same but there are even cheaper ones so I'd say not the very, very cheapest, but one step above that somewhat flat topper. And I, and, and I would not, I don't use a topper beyond the 600 grit level because as, at the finer grits, again, that little wobble does matter. So let me go ahead and work on this uh, preforming the upper half of our Alexandrite. So for the first cuts on the crown upper half of our gemstone, uh, the angle is 46 degrees. The index is the tooth is the uh, the four and the 92 index teeth. So I set a pretty good drip. We want to flush that swarf away. So you know, there's no perfect, but that's good enough, right about there. So I've got the uh, girdle now at about uh, a little less than one millimeter, 
eight, I think. So anywhere there is fine. With the finer laps, I'll walk it down to a 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, something like that. To me, anything between point, uh, a 0 0.5 and a 0.3 is, is the perfect girdle. Some people say a 0.2 millimeters is perfect. So with this lap, that's as far as I'll go. So I'll work on these uh, facets a little bit to just preform the stone and then go to my probably a 600 grit topper. So I finished going over the crown or the upper half of my stone with the 12M lap, about a 1500 grit uh, lap. So next I'll probably probably use my 14,000 grit diamond uh, on a bat lap uh, instead of an 8,000 grit diamond. I'll probably go straight to the 14 to pre-polish and then to polish. But let me show you how I clean my lap uh, before I put them away. Again, this is my 12M lap, which is a sintered lap that I got from Ukraine. Okay, so after I've uh, finished using my, my lap and I put it, gonna put it away, for all of the laps that have diamond embedded in them, all of my, my toppers or my uh, crystal lights, any, any of the laps that are steel laps with diamond in it, in this case, my sintered lap, which just means there's diamond on top of diamond on top of diamond. So when you grind through the first layer, uh, there's another set of diamonds under that. That's a sintered lap. And it's a bit more expensive than non-sintered laps. So uh, to clean it, I'm just gonna go over it. I go from inside to outside with uh, my lava soap. Uh, and then I spin it dry. And that's how I normally clean it. Uh, if I need additional cleaning, if something's embedded in it, I may use uh, the uh, the scrubbing pad with uh, Dawn uh, liquid detergent. Any de degreasing li detergent will work. But this is the normal uh, way I, I clean any of my uh, diamond laps. I get a really good flow of water and about 1,200 RPMs. And that's all I do uh, in between usages of my my laps, my topper laps, any of the steel laps with diamond embedded in it. And I don't know if lava soap, the pumice in it, the volcanic pumice in it has anything to do with cleaning it. I doubt it. But it does definitely remove some of the schwarf from the from the lap as I showed you. There's that black uh, schwarf that comes off. So it, you know, I do it. Uh, I don't, you know, I learned it this from somebody else. I don't know. It's not something you have to do, I'm just showing you what I do. Finished polishing the upper half of our stone and so now I'll um, set it up so that I can cut the table and then we'll be done with this uh, lab created uh, alexandrite. Okay, I finished polishing the lab created alexandrite so now I will uh, soak it in the acetone, remove it from the uh, adhesive and we'll weigh it, measure it and send it off to Bopi. Today I cut a piece of lab-created alexandrite using the improved Utopia design which was originally created by two of my favorite gem cutting designers, the late Jeff Graham and it was recently modified by Arya Akvarn. When I came across the design I, I knew I had to cut it because I really like designs by both of these individuals. Uh, the gemstone really sparkles. I would not however recommend this design for a brand new cutter. Pear shapes are challenging, and this design was selected for the master's level of the United States Fasteners Guild annual competition 
simply because it is a bit challenging. But it is a design that any cutter who has already cut a few stones should be able to cut. So I would recommend that you absolutely put this design on your to cut list. Please do let me know in the comments what you think of this gemstone and of this awesome design. And as always, happy fasting everyone. <music>